So on the off chance you haven't noticed, the 2010s have ended and a brand new decade has begun. There's so many exciting things to look forward to, like the long-awaited conclusion of the World War trilogy, the 57th Fire Emblem character being added to Smash, and perhaps most exciting of all, new music. Now what makes the turn of the decade such an exciting time for music fans is the mystery of what new sounds or genre is going to define it. Looking back at the past several decades, there's one or a few genres that are easy to associate them with, like the new wave or hair metal of the 80s, the grunge and alternative of the 90s, or the new metal and bling era rap of the 2000s. Now obviously mainstream music had a lot more and arguably better to offer than just those genres during those decades, but what makes these specifically so definitive is how fresh they sounded at the time and how dated they sound now. While describing music as dated is usually seen as a flaw, I think it's a testament to how important these genres really were during their respective era. Like if you hear a cheesy pop song with way too many synthesizers and it makes you imagine a big haircut, bright colors, and awful computer animation, you could probably guess which decade it's from. While it is easy to retrospectively look down upon some of these now dated genres, it's hard to deny the long-term impact that any of them have had on the progression of popular music, like grunge indirectly opening the floodgates for a wider range of underground music to be noticed by bigger labels, or even new metal testing the waters for entirely different genres coming together in a sometimes seamless fashion. But like all things that become popular, they would eventually die out because they became too oversaturated and audiences wanted to hear something new. This brings us to last decade, the 2010s, an era that became dominated by electro-pop tropes and overwhelming bass drops, but perhaps most importantly, trap. A sub genre of hip-hop that's defined by fast-paced 808 clap and hi-hat patterns, heavy bass, and auto-tuned vocals that usually talk about drugs, money, women, oh and ad-libs too, can't forget the ad-libs. <laughs> With such a gratifying, albeit largely one-dimensional genre dominating in popularity for several years now, I think it's safe to say that trap, at least in its current form, has already peaked. I mean, once YouTube vloggers get to it, that's when you know it's over. What I think separates trap from most other styles of popular music is that it's so easy to replicate, yet it uses that as its biggest strength. Since the most defining aspects of the genre lay in the rhythm section, it's easy to rework it into a multitude of contexts. It's to the point where trap is no longer just a rap subgenre, but a whole new style of pop, emo, and even trap metal is a thing. Regardless of how you feel about it, you can't deny the impact that it's had and will likely continue to carry in the future. There's going to be something new that dominates the airwaves in a matter of years, whether it's a hip-hop subgenre, a new type of pop or dance music, or something else entirely. Who knows, maybe country rap is the next wave, or deconstructed club, I genuinely have faith in that one. Regardless of what happens next, what does this mean for trap? Will it totally die out once it's no longer mainstream, or will it maintain a big enough audience to have a reason to keep innovating and continue thriving in the underground? Well, I think I found something that may or may not answer this question. What, you thought this was going to be a normal video where I talk about someone like Travis Scott or freaking Matt Ox? Oh wait. Tread is a brand new subgenre of trap that, while maintaining the heavy bass, hi-hats, and even sometimes auto-tuned vocals, carries more of an emphasis on melodic and glossy synths, as well as even faster tempos. At least that's how the internet defines it. Now if you ask me, I don't think these subtle additions on their own are enough to warrant an entire new subgenre, although I guess it's more of a micro-genre, as there's plenty of popular trap artists who've made music that fits this criteria that I doubt anyone would categorize as Tread. However, despite its existence only being for a handful of years, it's undergone kind of an artistic metamorphosis of its own and carved out a corner of underground trap that I can only see getting bigger in the future. Before we get there though, let's talk about where it all started. The term tread was first coined in 2016 when a Philadelphia-based group of producers called Working on Dying, consisting of Filthy, Oogie Main, Lucy Man, Forza, and Brandon Finessen, mixed together a compilation of songs that they had produced over the past couple of years for artists like Black Cray, Chapo, and Booty Chain, who actually came up with the term tread to begin with. Also, Lil Yachty's on here. Wild. Well, the tracks on this project don't stray that far from standard trap tropes, try saying that 10 times fast. There's something distinctly dark, yet catchy about the approach to production that these guys have to offer. The constantly fast and dense drum patterns play off of the subtly mixed, yet shining leading synths in a way that feels more natural than it should. While overwhelming bass lines kind of feel like a cliched gimmick in most trap, here it feels like the cornerstone to the ominous atmosphere in the context of the lo-fi recording. This is especially true on tracks like Count My Funds and Black Punk Rock, which incorporates these metallic percussion hits and even record scratching into this tread context beautifully. It simultaneously feels like a love letter to hip-hop's underground with its lyrics, song title, and production choices, and a step forward for the genre. When combined with the serious vocal delivery and relaxed flow, it makes for one of the most definitive and standout tracks in Tread thus far. I also find it impressive that the entire project flows together totally seamlessly, despite just being a mix of previously recorded tracks. All of the artists on here have other music that falls in line with the style as well, acting as a showcase for a plausibly upcoming pillar of underground hip-hop. Some notable tapes that are represented on this project include Shitty Sick Boy 
by Black Cray, the founder of Goth Money Records, an underground rap collective that's been pushing trap and cloud rap in a darker and more avant-garde direction throughout much of the 2010s. And since Working on Dying has a fairly similar production style, it only makes sense for these two to come together. Now, as much as I respect Black Cray for being one of modern hip-hop's most innovative artists, I'd highly recommend both of these, I don't really care for this particular tape that much. While the production from Filthy was pretty forward-thinking for 2015, putting trap into a more ambient yet melodic context, I find Black Cray's vocals to be a little too slurry and tired to totally mesh well with the beat selections. Not to mention his flows feel kind of played out by the end of the tape, despite only being eight tracks. But hey, at least we got the bubbly and irresistible mask up, which has a beat that sounds like a cross between a Memphis rap banger and an early 2000s Indietronica joint. Cray's flaw on here is pretty catchy, and the hushed vocals convey a more convincingly cold and serious tone than the rest of the tape. The song is definitely an essential for the genre thus far, and was a great choice for the tread mix. Another track from Black Cray that wound up on the mix is Every Day of the Week from his mixtape Working Out the Mud, and I definitely prefer this one to Shitty Sick Boy. While Filthy still does most of the production on here, the rest of the Working on Dying crew gets to shine too, like on the aforementioned Every Day of the Week produced by Forza and Oogie Main, which has these static but otherworldly keys that kind of remind me of Cool Keith's Black Elvis Lost in Space. The production all over this record, contrary to its presentation, is much more lively and fruitful than much of Working on Dying's other works, but maintains the airiness and fast-paced rhythms that make them stand out. One more tape that I want to mention before I move on is Trapped in the Trenches by Five Finger Posse, a rap group that's also from Philly. It contains rappers 5G, Alvin Abyss, Sub K9, Morg, and Young Mojo. This thing has the excellent track Black Punk Rock that I talked about earlier, and the rest of the record carries a similarly retro yet forward-thinking style. Despite sounding modern, something about it from the hard-hitting percussion and smooth, connected rap flows gives it somewhat of a 90s East Coast flavor, but put into a totally new context. For that reason, I'd say this tape is a bit more accessible for mainstream trap haters. But okay, we got a compilation of songs from different artists that were all produced by the same handful of producers with a slightly different spin on the trap formula. Is that really enough to warrant an entire new subgenre? Well, I think similarly to how the term black metal came from an album that doesn't really sound like how we know that genre to sound now, Trend Mix is merely the starting point to a brand new style of hip hop. And while being distinct enough to start and influence a movement on its own, I think Tread will likely continue to evolve into a whole other beast as it has been for the past several years. After this mix's release in 2016, there's been a pretty good amount of projects that have pushed the genre forward, some of which are even produced by members of the Working on Dying crew, like this collaboration between Wi-Fi God and Oogie Main called Trenches to Riches. The beats on this record are more detailed and intricate than most of Oogie's previous works, juxtaposing all these abstract instrumental layers into pretty seamless tread beats. The biggest example of this would probably be on Money Dancing, where the leading synths, drums, and bass all sound like they're playing King of the Hill to stay at the front of the mix. It's as dizzying as it is catchy, and feels carefully orchestrated to be intoxicating on a whole other level compared to other cloud rap. Despite the instrumentals on this album all being trap beats at their core, the drumming gets so complex at times that it has a borderline IDM tinge to it. Listen to the song Good Gas if you want an example of that. In the midst of all of this abstraction are some pretty solid melodies as well, like the glitchy but infectious leads on World War III and the sad pianos that dominate the closer. While Wi-Fi God's flows and lyricism can be kind of predictable, it becomes more impressive once you realize how whacked out these beats really are. It's a mixtape that doesn't reveal its intricacies on first listen just because of how conventional it might sound on the surface, but give it a little time and you'll start to see how distinct Tread really can be. Another one of the more popular releases in this wave thus far is a different collaboration, this time between Working on Dying and Blade, literally titled Working on Dying. Now, I already made an entire video about Blade and Drain Gang, in fact, based on the view count, that's probably what you guys know me from, but I kind of skimmed over this tape and wish I went more in depth about it, so I'll do that here. There's a pretty even mix of producer credits spread throughout the nine tracks on this mixtape, with a good majority all having a different combination of producers, with the exception of a few credits only being given to Forza. As a result, this is one of the most unpredictable tread projects yet, as it not only feels like a showcase of what each member of Working on Dying is capable of, but a step outside all of their comfort zones. Blade has a completely different style from other frequent collaborators like Five Finger Posse or Goth Money Records, writing over futuristic and very melodic beats with an unconventional vocal delivery that ties the whole thing together into this triumphantly numb atmosphere. Despite Blade's usual producer White Armor only getting one co-credit on the entire mixtape, Working on Dying's production style translates over to Drain Gang seamlessly. The group has already established themselves as being able to construct airy and melodic beats on some of their previous tapes, but the mood of this one is totally different. This is maybe Blade's punchiest and most visceral project yet, as the quick and crisp drums perfectly complement the drained out vocals. There's even a track with Black Cray on here with a more minor and subtle chord progression that finds the perfect balance between Drain and Goth Money's styles. It's a tape that, despite Blade being generally more polarizing than climate change, is a great starting point for getting into Tread, as it sees the style taking a less lo-fi and more refined approach without compensating any artistic value. The Tread influence would actually seep onto Blade's next album, and my favorite Cloud Rap album, Period, Red Light, 
White, despite only having production credits from Blade's usual crew, White Armor, You Are a Legend. Tracks like 1D, Steve Jobs, and even Obedient have these complex rhythms with sped up tempos that mend really well with everything else going on. If you're looking for other Working on Dying collaborations, then I'd recommend the ones they've done with a few members of Five Finger Posse, like Horror Block 2K55, which finds a way to fuse the sound with horrorcore, and Freezer Berm, which doubles down on the group's icier aesthetic. I'll leave a list of projects in the description so you can binge them all if you so desire. So while Working on Dying clearly does a good job of networking with their underground contemporaries, will they or have they ever seen any mainstream success? Well, yes, as the group has had close ties to Lil Uzi Vert throughout much of his career and produced plenty of songs for him, even if none of them really showcase their trademark tread style. But the one track that arguably gave them the most notoriety and has the most views on their YouTube channel is... Uh... Yep, that's right. That song from a few years ago with that 13 year old who was rapping with fidget spinners in a gas station was actually produced by Oogie Main from Working on Dying and is where he got his producer tag from. But okay, that's besides the point. H how did we get here? Well, according to this article from The Fader, which I'll leave a link to in the description, Forza discovered him on a Philadelphia rap promotion Twitter page, and his eyes were immediately filled with dollar signs. Okay, for real though, it did prove to be a pretty good marketing tactic, as the video for Overwhelming currently sits at 28 million views, which is about 28 million more than everything else they've made combined, and it gave us this hilarious comment section. Matt Ox has gone on to have a relatively successful career, continuing to rack up millions of views and streams, and even did a song with X before he died. Why you gotta sleep on my crew? I mean, he's not wrong. As for my thoughts on his music, I think the novelty of listening to a rapper who needs an adult to get into an R-rated movie gets pretty stale after a track or two. And even if I were to completely overlook that, his debut album Ox, despite most of the beats still being produced by Working on Dying, all sound like blatant throwaways that do nothing to even sound like, let alone push forward tread as a genre. The hi-hat patterns are all super predictable, and so is the way they're incorporated into these beats that are all way too sanitary for their own good. And do I even need to mention the vocals? Like, I don't mean to be a Mad Ox hater or anything, but he really does just feel like a gimmick that the group used as a means of further building their platform to a bigger audience. But who knows, the kid is still only 15, and maybe in a matter of years he'll take his experience in this field and make something that stands out apart from just being a rapper who isn't old enough to have a driver's license. I really don't have much else to say about him other than... I used to play Sonic on my uncle Nintendo 64. There are literally no Sonic games in the Nintendo 64! Oogie Main would actually go on to produce I'm Upset by Drake, which I was kind of bittersweet on finding out because on one hand it's really awesome that hundreds of millions of people have now heard the I'm working on producer tag and that Blade is now connected to Drake in some way. But on the other hand, the song kind of sucks and doesn't really show off what makes Oogie or the rest of Working on Dying so interesting. But okay, for this new genre to truly be the future of trap as I so boldly proclaimed in the video title, then there has to be more than just these few groups of artists making this kind of music. After all, pretty much everything I've talked about so far has involved the genre's creators, and to be its own genre there has to be some other artists who've taken notice, right? Well, ladies and gentlemen, look no further than one of the most interesting and promising groups that I have listened to in quite a while, Reptilian Club Boys. These guys are a Tennessee-based rap group who I was actually put onto by a viewer of mine a couple months back, and it kind of inspired me to make this whole video, so big shout out to Blap. The group's official lineup consists of all of these ads, but was founded by members High C and Diamonds On My Dick. While music has only been coming out under the RCB name for a little over a year now, there's a few collaborative tapes between the two that go back a little further. The first of which that I could find at least is Reptilian Shrine from 2017 and for a first mixtape, it's pretty good. While it's maybe not as daring as it would have seemed had it come out a few years earlier, the two still began to establish a distinctly lo-fi and disjointed approach to cloud rap and trap that can easily be compared to shoegaze and hypnagogic pop. It's much more steady and groove-driven than some of the group's later work, and despite the use of autotune, both MCs have very distinct vocals that separate themselves from their underground contemporaries. Check out songs like OG Gas and Shrooms on a Big Mac where the drums and bass cut through the atmospheric yet abstract synths with vocals that bring the whole track to life. The two would collaborate frequently on subsequent singles and mixtapes, but release an official follow-up not too long after with Diamonds in Tokyo, the movie. While I find the vocal performances and flows on here to be a little more flat and less interesting than its predecessor, this is where we start to see the group's tread influences begin to unfold with faster tempos and colder synths. The beats on tracks like Itachi and Demons Come Out are some of the most unique and distinct sounding instrumentals that I've heard in hip-hop in the past couple of years, with defining characteristics 
acoustics like ad-libbed samples and the way different melodies are layered on top of each other. This tape feels like the point where high C and DOMD, which by the way stands for Diamonds on My Dick, began to come into their own, but still leave some room for improvement. In early 2019, the two would make a collaborative mixtape with fellow abstract cloud rap artist Cartier God, who's worked with DOMD before, titled Bloodthirsty, or hashtag Bloodthirsty, depending on what platform you use. While it's released under Cartier God's name on Spotify and Apple Music, the letters RCB are on the cover art, so I'm going to count it as the first Reptilian Club Boys project. You can take the term full length with a grain of salt since this mixtape is only 7 tracks and 18 minutes, but that's about the typical length of every project I've discussed in this video so far anyway. This is maybe the most abstract project I've heard from these guys yet. The vocal mixing is much more faint and distant than usual, which is sometimes to the tape's detriment, but works out pretty well for the most part. The opening track has this really catchy chorus that kind of sneaks up on you because of how the vocals are placed, but I think it works better than it would have otherwise. I also think the more psychedelic vibes of Britical and Vampires at 12 are only enhanced by the off-kilter performances. While the sleepier and more monotone delivery that I didn't care for on a few tracks from Demons in Tokyo show up on here, I think the tape is a pretty solid effort overall. After this, the group seemingly started to include a ton of new members with their follow-up tape, Reptilian Club Boy's Bizarre Adventure, having a bunch more credits listed on Bandcamp. This tape also seems like a more proper debut than Bloodthirsty, as it's not only one of their only albums that's available on every streaming service, but the only one that's officially under the name Reptilian Club Boys. And man, this thing is awesome. While it's still pretty brief, only being 8 tracks and 20 minutes, this is by far their most refined, diverse, and fully developed project yet. Even though it's a bit more accessible than Reptilian Shrine or even Demons in Tokyo, it takes just as many risks, even if they don't seem as apparent as they do in the group's earlier work. It doesn't rely on being lo-fi or having poor mixing for the sake of being experimental, but rather flips the trap formula on its head in a creative way that they maybe couldn't have done before. These beats, while all still being very detailed, focus primarily on one melody that's made to sound as thick and dense as possible. A couple good examples would be on the track Mad Max, which has these fuzzy but huge sounding synth harmonies that are futuristic as all hell, and Heaven or Hell, which juxtaposes these sweet piano keys with gritty bass drums in a way that sounds surprisingly harmonious. However, I think the biggest reason this tape is such a step forward is the creative and rapid flows that are presented on here. While each rapper has a distinct voice that keeps them from all sounding the same, the way they go about rapping on these instrumentals is extremely fascinating from a musical standpoint. The rapping is often done super quickly, but unlike other fast rappers that rap for the sole purpose of showing off and being technical, hell, I wouldn't say the rapping on here is really all that technical at all, it comes across more as a fast spoken word piece than a conventional rap flow. Even if the topics are a little cliche, there's so much charisma in every bar, and the way all of these unconventional flows play off of these unusual but catchy beats really makes this one of my favorite trap albums, period, and the tread influence is more or less just icing on the cake. This isn't the only RCB project from last year that I want to recommend, though, as High C actually put out a tape called High the Lone Star Mixtape, which, despite being recorded years prior and released a couple months before Bizarre Adventure, feels like a step forward from that album. It finds a crossroad between the group's earlier, more abstract side and the focused experimentation of what they would go on to do. While it might not be as varied or have the same memorable flows as Bizarre Adventure, it makes up for that by having one killer and adrenaline-filled piece of DIY trap bliss after another. I know that people were drawing comparisons between trap and punk music a few years ago, but nowhere does that feel more prevalent than on this tape, in both its homemade musical quality and presentation. I mean, just look at the album cover. Another quick project that I have to give at least a quick shout out to is this DJ mix titled Rare RCB Hex D dot MP3 by Tomo the Undying, containing five RCB songs, some of which are easier to find than others, remixed into this seamlessly flowing and beautiful track that goes on for about 15 minutes. It's extremely lo-fi and the different instrumental layers can be hard to pick out from one another, yet it still manages to be extremely melodic, with the lo-fi production only further adding to the aesthetic. Even though there isn't much else to say about it, it's become one of my favorite trap projects, period, and I would love it if more artists took inspiration from it. So overall, while this tread microgenre is still super young and is kind of unpredictable as to whether or not it'll stick around, I think it's given us some of the most interesting trap music of the past couple of years. Because trap is likely going to diminish from the mainstream in the near future, at least in its current form, I think its influence has the potential to last a long time, that leaves room for it to continue innovating in the underground, and I think with the way things are currently going, Tread will likely come into its own as a more distinct subgenre. If you disagree with me or anything I've said in this video, then feel free to leave an angry comment. But either way, thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed, you know the drill. Said it's